Hi everybody, I have uh, some of my water calculations pulled up, which I do before every brew. I have a recipe all lined up to brew this coming weekend here, my yeast starter's going, things of that nature. But I need to look at what my water additions are going to look like, so I wanted to take everybody through that. I had spoke before in a couple of my videos of getting a water report. If you're doing an all-grain brew, you you really need to get one of these done not only to just kind of see where you're at but more importantly to determine where your mash pH is going to be there is a realm of issues that you run into with a poor mash or a improper mash pH uh, you can get off flavors poor conversion there's there's a laundry list of stuff so you want to make sure that you are within the recommended pH range uh, in order to do that, you have to get your your water tested, get it back, see where you're at, plug in your your malt bill, and then see what adjustments you need to make. So this is what I have. I have done two water water tests through through Ward Labs. It's a little tricky to find there. They have a home brewer's test, which is really expensive, but then they have uh, just like a brewer's test. It's 20 bucks. You know what? I'm going to find that. We're going to pull that up on a web page here, and I'm going to walk some, or I'm going to pull this up in a second, walk you guys through that as well, I think. Uh, cause it's only like 20 bucks. You send it into them in like a flat rate box or something, and you get it back. So looking at the Ward Labs website, it looks like they changed their plans and prices effective 1 October 19. My last test was actually in March 19, so just before this. I used to get a W6 household mineral test done for $21, which it looks like they no longer have. I'm not seeing a W6 on here. Uh, they do have a complete mineral test, which they had before, and it is a bit more expensive. And it looks like they've also added the brewer's test, uh, which is the same price. Uh, they do have the option to receive the kit container and all this fancy stuff, which looks like this when you click on it, and it's $42. Uh, you don't really need all that. You can just pay for the test and send it in in your own container. Uh, usually I just rinse it and uh, follow these instructions here, but I'll, I'll go through and sanitize the bottle with, with sanitizer and then follow these instructions, fill it up, cap it and everything, put a uh, Ziploc bag over the end and send it in with a check. They're usually pretty quick on their turnaround. Uh, so looking at these tests, you could get either one of these tests sent into your own bottle and it would just cost you shipping plus that, uh, but looking up here at this W4 looks like it would actually give you everything you need and it's actually the same price as what the W6 used to be. Looking at this test, it looks like it has everything that you would need in order to uh, come up with your brewing additions. Those, if there's any doubt, you can get one of these tests, or uh, actually, if you give them a call, they are they're really good about answering the phone right away and be able to answer any questions that you would need. Here's mine. I've done two of them with with Ward Labs, and very consistent. I am uh, I am on city water. It's really soft. Uh, which is good for brewing um, lighter beers. However, I notice when I do like a darker beer, like I have a, a nice Newcastle clone, or if I'm doing um, like a Dunkelweiss and something, you know, definitely darker, darker grains. I have to supplement with uh, some slaked lime to go ahead and bring my pH up to the level I need. Uh, but for this, so I'll take you through this. This is what they kick out. They give you your overall pH. Uh, but these are the numbers that you are looking for. You need to plug them into, there's there's online calculators, uh, which I used to use. I was doing just brewing a bag, so doing the calculations were simple because I only had just the one water volume. There's no sparge addition, so it was really easy. But then when I stepped up to doing my three vessel, 12-gallon uh, system, I also wanted to be able to calculate adjustments to my sparge water. So... To speak to that real quick, uh, this I, this is uh, John Palmer's Easy Water Calculator Spreadsheet. 
I find that it works really well. It has my numbers right where I need it. And you can select here if you want to adjust your sparge water or not. Now, he, John, has said that you don't necessarily need to adjust your sparge water because your mash is already over. However, I like to adjust it because of this, which is your overall water profile of what your, you know, the water that's going in your beer. And beer is 90% water. So these are his recommended ranges. If you look at John Palmer's stuff, obviously he's got how to brew. I think he has another brewing book and then he has a book specifically on water. But this is his recommendations based on his research. Uh, I have plugged my calculations into my starting water profile based on my Ward Labs. Note that Ward Labs gives you a sulfate number here that you need to multiply by three in order to get your actual sulfate. So based on my recipe, this is what I have. Uh, I've plugged that in to He's got nice little drop downs here. I got 24 pounds of two row. Others just going to be my carapils. Not going to. It's only two SRM, so it's not really going to affect much. I have a pound of uh, wheat and a pound of Cara 40. So here you're going to select, you know, in this case, uh, uh, crystal malt, and then you can go ahead and put in uh, the color for it. So with that, uh, then you got to go into your actual actual water volumes. I know that based on this, I have nine, volume, uh, nine gallons of mash water that I need to adjust. And then I go ahead and just add these two. I, I have to do uh, two sparges. So add that, that comes out to 6.96. So seven gallons is going to be close enough for this. I'm sure it'll take a decimal point, but uh, it's close enough. So going down into my additions now. I know this is an extremely light beer. You look at the malt bill on this, this is a ton of Turo. The only darker malt I have is a pound of Care 40. And for 24 pounds of Turo and some other, other uh, grains here, that's extremely light. So I know that I'm going to have to hit it with uh, lactic acid to get my mash pH back down. So I'll show you here too. So if I take that off of there, um, you see that I'm over. So you can play with it for whatever you need. Um, I know that four mils is, is going to get me right where I want to be. I usually just kind of shoot for the middle of that, so I got a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, and then my my uh, water additions themselves. So gypsum, calcium chloride, also uh, Epsom salt gets me the ranges that I need. I do like to adjust my sparge water. Uh, which contributes to my overall water profile. Anyways, so with uh, doing that, here's what I'm sitting at. That'll br This line is going to adjust my mash pH along with uh, my lactic acid. Gets me in the range I want to be. Uh, I do not have to adjust anything up. This is an ex it, uh, for my city water. Uh, which is very soft. Uh, you know, if I was doing a darker beer, I I would have to do adjustments to get it up. Use slaked lime. You don't want to mess with chalk. And that brings me down here to the end, which is uh, John recommends uh, at least 100 parts per million of calcium for good uh, good fermentation with your yeast. So I'm definitely within that range. I've got my magnesium bumped up. That was my Epsom salt addition. Uh, sodium, I, there's really no adjustments in that. And then here's your, your two big ones, your calcium chloride and your sulfate. Uh, now I have, uh, if you do, if you have like a, uh, I shoot for a balanced profile. Some people will really plus up on sulfates getting into like 300, 350 parts per million for like an IPA or something. Um, you can do that. It's going to make your beer more bitter. Uh, I've done it. What I find personally is that it makes uh, an IPA extremely astringent uh, and it takes forever to mellow out, if ever. So I really just shoot for a, a balanced profile between calcium chloride and sulfate. You see here he gives a nice ratio. I am within my recommended ranges 
uh, and that's going to bring it uh, where it is. So you'll see here when I brew this weekend, I'll be utilizing you know these weighed out additions to make my adjustments on on this recipe. Next thing you'll see is it, it will be me actually going through and, and brewing this animal. So uh, that's what I got. Thanks for watching and uh, happy brewing.